A lot of uh, your thoughts coming in on this this idea of the Northern Powerhouse. So let's take another call. Brian Mills calling from Stockton on Tees. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What did you want to say, Brian? Yeah, I would say it's um, very unbalanced in terms of investment. Um, we've already had comparison with London and the North East, where I think 60 times as much is spent on rail investment in London as it is in the North East. Um, I would say it's biased in terms of road building. They've just put forward a lot of schemes. Last 50 years, we've had a lot of road building already, and I don't think it's really solved the situation, road building and widening. Um, I saw no mention of buses or the environment in the budget at all, I don't think, this time. Um, Moving on to rail schemes, which is my main point, um, I would suggest there are two quite low-cost schemes, which would make a vast difference to the Northern connection overall. One would be something in the order of a £200 million scheme to link West Yorkshire to the North East by a more direct route through the city of Ripon, and that would provide an alternative route for heavy freight and for interregional services, which would cut about um, 30%, sorry, about, mm. yeah, 30% of the journey times. And, you know, it could be done for a, maybe a couple of hundred million pounds, that. Um, there's another route in the North East where I live, Stockton on Tees, Teesside to Tyneside, where the present journey time is one hour, 20 minutes, via a rather circuitous railway using old-fashioned trains. The direct route is there. It just needs a little bit of investment in it. It's, it could be done in about 40, 45 minutes, Newcastle to Middlesbrough Centre, and that would make a tremendous difference between connectivity in the North East. Mm. And I just cannot see how not that isn't on a priority. That would cost just a few million pounds to do. It, it, it's really interesting because whenever we talk about connectivity and sort of energising the country and energising other parts of the country uh, and business with, with better infrastructure, HS2 comes up, HS3 comes out. Entirely well, I, 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 sorry, yeah. I'd abandon HS2 straight away. I think right. it's a ridiculous idea. It's the sort of, it's the sort of concord and knobs on it and it's like it's like you, like the, somebody, it's, it's one of these high tech schemes for the very rich for the very high technically minded will probably go wrong and cost twice as much as it's supposed to cost in the first place and it will bias things towards London not away from London that's its big problem that's really interesting because actually stay on the line Brian Jeremy uh, Jeremy Seed is calling us from Harrow you agree with Brian don't yeah, you as far yeah. as HS2 is concerned anyway. absolutely I think HS2 is a grand project to make politicians feel good about themselves it's going to cost 80 billion pounds of borrowed money uh, on imported rail imported trains, largely imported labour and imported sleepers, uh, and we're going to have to pay that back. It's a complete waste. If we're going to borrow this money, what needs to happen is we need to extend the M1 up to Edinburgh. So let's, let's get that powerhouse working. Because let's not anybody forget, our northern cities were and should be the powerhouse of industrial uh, industry in this country. But there's the other thing. We have one of the biggest uh, ports in Europe. It's called Felix, though. There isn't a proper motorway and there isn't an adequate rail link. That should go there, which would also open up East Anglia and improve jobs, improve housing, improve investment into the area. Mm. HS2, all it does, it saves 20 minutes between London and Birmingham. Even David Cameron can't take it home to Oxford because he'd have to jump out the window to get there. It's a complete waste of time. It doesn't take any freight. It's a foreign gauge. It, has, it will do absolutely nothing. And that is what I call money being thrown down the drain. And to, and to answer a previous caller, the last thing we need is more regional government. Anybody knows that the more government you put in, the more they mess up every single time because they don't listen to ordinary people like you and I. Mm. Uh, yes, and J- J- uh, Brian is st- still here. Um, mm. uh, I suppose both of you are singing pretty much from the same yeah. hymn sheet. But uh, I, 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 actually, I, I disagree I, with that last point. I, I, I think regional government was the excellent idea, probably regional government with power. One of the reasons we're not really supposed against it was because it gets so, such low powers. And I certainly don't think we should have elected mayors inflicted on us by the government. It, it, we need we need democracy. I mean, so well, what kind of extra... That's really interesting. So so what kind of extra powers well, would you have, have a regional power, government have? If we had the power of investing in our railways, for example, the, 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 the same amount of money that's now invested in, proportionally that's invested in London, we've had a fantastic railway system 20, 30 years ago. Mm. The trouble is we've never had that investment. It's always been concentrated on one or two main lines. And the regional railways are actually worse now than they were 50 years ago in many ways. Mm. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, you know, I just said the word HS2 and I knew things would go uh, slightly bonkers, and they have. HS2 is just an expansion of London's dormitory area, right, Starlight's dad. Uh, when was the last time anyone speculated on likely fares for a journey on this putative HS2 line, says Ed Wilson. Uh, more of that, predictably, uh, to come, I'm sure.
will do absolutely nothing. And that is what I call money being thrown down the drain. And to, and to answer a previous caller, the last thing we need is more regional government. Anybody knows that the more government you put in, the more they mess up every single time because they don't listen to ordinary people like you and I. Mm. Uh, yes, and J- J- uh, Brian is st- still here. Um, yeah. I suppose both of you are singing pretty much from the same yeah. hymn sheet. But uh, I, 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 I disagree with that last point. I, I, I think regional government was an excellent idea, probably regional government with power. One of the reasons we're not we voted against it was because it gets sorts its low powers. And I certainly don't think we should have elected mayors inflicted on us by the government. It, it, we need we need democracy. I mean, so, well, what kind of extra? That's really interesting. So, so what kind of extra powers well, we would you have, have a regional power, government have? If we had the power of investing in our railways, for example, that, that, that the same amount of money that's now invested in, proportionally that's invested in London, we've had a fantastic railway system 20, 30 years ago. Mm. The trouble is, we've never had that investment. It's always been concentrated on one or two main lines, and the regional railways are actually worse now than they were 50 years ago in many ways. Mm. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, do you know, I just said the word HS2, and I knew things would go uh, slightly bonkers, and they have. HS2 is just an expansion of London's dormitory area, writes Starlight's dad. Uh, when was the last time anyone speculated on likely fares for a journey on this putative HS2 line, says Ed Wilson. Uh, more of that, predictably, uh, to come, I'm sure. 